Let's now take a look at ARM's embed platforms and see some programming examples. ARM Embed OS is a free and open source embedded operating system. It provides the operating system and a set of tools to develop, emulate and debug for the platform. ARM maintains the documentation for all the APIs at os.embed.com docs and offers a forum where developers can share their problems and solutions. If you are familiar with Arduino, Embed is pretty much the equivalent product from ARM that works on the Cortex and microcontrollers. And even some Arduino boards are now switching to Embed. Embed has been offering an online IDE and compiler for many years now, but it also supports offline compilers like Yotta, MicroPython and plain Mac files. If you need to do some low-level debugging, Kale is a standalone IDE that supports JTAG. You can find a list of all the embed supported boards following the link on the screen. The target platform for the following examples is the popular Microbit board that has a nicely defined C API from Lancaster University to access all its sensors, buttons, LEDs, and Bluetooth connection. Now, let's take a look at how to create a simple program using the online compiler. Let's start with a simple example on how to play music using a digital pin of the microbit. As I mentioned before, microcontrollers often have a dedicated internal counter that can be configured to offload some work that can run in parallel, and we can make use of those counters to configure a pulse with modulation signals that gets emitted in one of the digital pins of the microbit. The sound waves will be squared, but you can implement a very simple RC low-pass filter to make it sound nicer. In the graph on the right you can see how PWM is used to simulate analog sprites to control speeds in DC motors or brightness in an LED. Now that we know how to output a wave, we need to learn which frequencies we want to output for each note and we need to translate that into microseconds, since that's what the internal counter understands. The next step is to match the name of the notes with the microseconds value using a simple lookup table. This is a very common programming practice in microcontrollers, where you want to precalculate results that depend on difficult mathematical operations to save runtime power. Keep in mind that the compiler is extremely smart and it will likely optimize all lookup table values that can be accessed at runtime if you declare the table as a constant. Finally, you can create a simple loop where you set up the note volume with a set analog value, the frequency with set analog period microsecond, and the duration with a simple weight microsecond. While procedural music generation is nice if well done, you may want to play a song. You can surely find many pieces of songs by using Google, but some of them will be very badly coded, and when you try to flash them into the device, you will get a region RAM overflowed with stack error. That means that some data, which is statically stored in the stack, uses so much space that the overflow into the dynamic memory region. To mitigate the memory usage, start by making sure that the nodes use a single byte since they shouldn't be more than 256. And please calculate the greatest common divisor of all the node durations, then use it to factorize the nodes as it multiplies, since music is often structured into bars of fixed size and fixed division. And here you have the simple code to play a song as an array of values into our previous lookup table of frequencies, together with an array of nodes duration in milliseconds. To use the Embed Online Compiler, you need to visit the os.embed.com website, then click on the compiler in the top right corner. This will open a web page with uh, all your projects on the left, and where you can create a new project, click in the new button on the top left. Set the platform target for BBC Microbit. Choose a template that you want to use for your project. In this case, we are using an empty program. 
and write the name of your program. In this case, we are going to call it Synth. This is an empty project. Let's now try to add some files. I already did this project before, so just move some files over. We copy paste the main and all its dependencies. Now let's take a look at the source code. The main programs includes uh, microbit.h, that is the only required uh, line to get uh, the microbit libraries imported in your projects. Then it defines a not enum, a array of periods that we discussed before in the slides, and includes two files containing uh, two songs. After that, the program tries to generate a sawtooth wave. Then it plays all the notes one after another. Plays the Mario melody, then the other world melody, and finally the pirate melody. All macro bit programs ends with release fiber bit before return zero. Now let's try to compile this program. As you can see, the program cannot find macrobit.h because we include it explicitly, but the online IDE offers you a fix it button. Let's click the button. The dialog offers us a choice to where to import the macrobit library from. You can go with the one with the most import. After the import is complete, the compiler is compiling the code and generating the binaries. Afterwards, your browser will download the X file containing the program. On the right side of the screen, you can see how much flash memory and RAM your program is using. Now you can plug the macro bit to your computer using USB that will mount a new driver where you can copy the X program. After the copy is finished, the macrobit will reboot and your program will be running. This is an image of how I connected a female audio jack to the macrobit, to pins 0 and ground. And now, let's listen to the melodies played by the macrobit. We can record the output of the microbit using a microphone cable connected to a computer. Then we can open Audacity to check the waveform. If we scroll in, in a bit of the song, we can see all the square waveform, exactly as we expected. And if we scroll at the beginning where the notes increase in frequency, we can see the square forms getting tighter and tighter as the pitch of the notes increase. Though we only checked square wave music, 
Many microcontrollers have analog pins that use the internal digital to analog converter to emit a value between zero and the max voltage. If you want different sounds, you can use more processing power to emit different wave shapes. And if you have enough RAM, you can even store a wave table and use it to emulate real-world instruments.